everybody, it's the Freeze Flame. And LOL Simplicity. And welcome to the uh, first rant slash appreciation video uh, from my channel. Uh, we, we, we'll do these periodically because, you know, we're nerds and we like to appreciate all the great things that the world of nerddom has created. And I assume we're doing this one in preparation for Arkham City? Of course we are. Uh, so we're doing Batman villains, probably the greatest um, assortment of villains ever imagined. Uh, uh, star debatable. Well, uh, okay. All right. He's more of a Marvel Marvel fanboy, so. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, my experience with DC is basically Justice League and The Dark Knight, so. Uh, basically, it's just gonna be you. Oh, Appreciate yeah. Everything. Oh, and I guess Arkham Asylum. But yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's get started. The first villain we'll be um, discussing is the Mad Hatter. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like Alice in Wonderland. It is Alice in Wonderland, Zach. That's what I thought. I'm good at. Uh, this. Okay, so his real name is Jervis Tetch. Ch- T- T- Jervis Tetch. Um, as a kid, he was bullied because he looks like a fucking idiot, and, uh, you know, he he was always obsessed with reading the Lewis Carroll novel Alice in Wonderland, and eventually he believed himself to be the incarnation of the Mad Hatter, so when he, uh, turned to crime, he became the Mad Hatter. Uh, so, I'm just gonna... Pull him up on the wiki, and yep. oh my god, he looks like a racist, or he he looks like a stereotypical, you know, Irish stereotype. Yes, he probably yeah yeah. Um, he said like, ginger. <laughs> oh, I, I actually no, he's like completely bald in the Lego Batman version. I, there's like a little picture over here. Yeah, I know. That, I didn't like the Lego Batman version of him. And anyway, his yellow hands for some reason. <laughs> They're gloves. In, ter- in terms of abilities and powers, um, he, he falls into the my what I call the second category of Batman villains, which is you're either psychotic and a, you're either a psychotic genius or you're a really big, stupid, really strong thing. So he, he's in he's in the second category of psychotic geniuses. Um, okay. He is um, he he's a hypnotist. And you know those you know those little cards they put in the hats that says like ten over six, which I still have no idea what those are supposed to mean. But um, he he puts little uh, brain controlling devices in them, and he puts them in hats and then makes people wear them, and then he can control them from wherever he wants and make them do whatever he wants. Okay, that's that's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, a lot of my knowledge comes from Batman the Animated Series too, um, because that's <laughs> my favorite show ever. Because so, we're too young to have bought any of the comics. I've that's true. I've been searching for comics and unsuccessfully. I've I've read a few. I've read like Nightfall and stuff like that. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. I haven't read anything. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. Yeah. So in Batman the Animated Series, he abducted this girl named Alice, who he has an affection for. Uh, well, okay, that's, that's definitely not creepy at all. No, um, what he what happens is he does something nice for her, something like that, and um, she she just thinks you know he he tried to help her out. He's a friend, but uh, that's definitely that's definitely sounding like rape. I, he he thinks that she likes him. He loves her, so he abducts her. Batman comes, you know, he's like I'm Batman, and then he's like okay. So then he uh, he runs away, but he puts a was that mind- was that after or before she got raped? I don't. Well, I'm just saying. It sounds like she. It's got hard raped. to tell. It's hard to tell. Um, but um, he put a little mind control device on her, so now she just sat there in his tea garden pot <laughs> thing, and um, then Batman showed up. After you know, Batman had to fight off a bunch of people who were hypnotized as like. Um, the uh, the playing cards and the queen. There was some some woman who was brainwashed to be the queen of hearts. Uh, and and then eventually Batman just kind of you know beat him up. He, he 
Batman did what I always like thought people should do in certain situations. Mad Hatter <laughs> trapped him in a, a maze of cards. So what does Batman do? Climbs on top of the maze and just jumps the walls. <laughs> like, why don't more people do that when they're in mazes? Um, yeah, and then he just, you know, beats him. Sends him to Arkham. Stuff like that. Ooh, Batman. Then in another episode... Uh, I'm going to spoil a bunch of stuff, by the way. Another episode... <laughs> Way, um, to, way to be on that spoiler alert. Um, Batman, he wakes up as Bruce Wayne, and he, to his surprise, he finds that his fam- his parents are alive. He's married to Selina Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman. Um, you know, but... he And he's not Batman anymore. He, he was never Batman. It's like an awesome <laughs> universe. Not Batman. Um, there is still a Batman, though, in, in this new world, and he's, like, freaking the fuck out. He's like, oh, my God, what's going on? Dad, why are you fat kind of thing? And, you know, eventually, uh, he, he's, like, looking at newspapers. The words are backwards. Like, letters are falling off the pages and stuff. And you're like, what the hell is going on? And um, I can hear you typing. And Oh, sorry. Just trying to... Get a better idea. I'm just reading. And then the he, then um, you're, blah, then Bruce confronts the Batman of this world, and starts fighting him. Um, he beats him and takes off its mask, and it actually is Jervis Jervis Tetch underneath the mask. Whoa! Uh, what a yeah. twist! Yeah, with a twist. So Batman finds out that it's actually the Mad Hatter is actually Batman. So then he's like, oh, I must be under his mind control. So he jumps off a building. And then he wakes up, and he's in, like, a bunch of machines and stuff. Hmm. And Batman breaks out, and he, like, pins the Hatter to the floor, and he's like, why didn't you just kill me like any sensible person? And Hatter's like, well, you ruined my life, so I would do an- I would give you any life you wanted just to keep you out of mine. I believe that was the direct quote. Um, All right. Um, which, you know, you you feel some sympathy, but at the same time, he's a guy that dresses up like a crazy guy from a book. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate? Um, all of these are all of these in this list are definitely uh, six or higher. Uh, I'd give him a six, just because. Um, He's pretty generic. I mean, like, given my basic knowledge of Batman, I had no idea this dude existed, so... Yeah. Um, there are there are plenty of comics where he's done stuff, like when they clashed with the Teen Titans and stuff. <laughs> he almost <laughs> he almost killed Beast Boy. Um, but yeah, he, he, he mined... What's the girl's name? Elastigirl? She can, like, grow really big. Something like that. I don't. That's he. Probably. He mind controlled her and made her. Pretty go. sure. Pretty sure that was the Incredibles. But no. It, whatever. <laughs> I, I just I remember reading this and uh, whatever the girls the chick that can grow big uh, who Beast Boy was on a team with he mind controlled her and made her grow really big and then she almost made him eat Beast Boy. Okay, that's uh, that's strange. Yeah. Um. Uh, so okay. six six out of ten. All right. Six out of ten, just because he's he's pretty generic. I mean, he's got a unique uh, modus operandi, but otherwise uh, generic in the sense that hypnosis is kind of a boring power. Yeah, and he's just another one of those Arkham uh, cellmates who doesn't really do much. All right. Well, let's go on to villain number two. All right, villain number two is Clayface. Ooh. Now. There are a numerous amount of clay faces. I think there are three. But um, since, like I said, I watched uh, Batman the Animated Series, we'll be talking about Matt Hagen, who was the clay face in that show. So, um, in the show, he was a, an actor who had suffered from a terrible, terrible car crash, and, and as a result, his face was destroyed. Uh, I'm just. I just pulled up the wiki on this dude. Uh, it says he's the second Clayface. Yes, he is the second Clayface, according to the comics. All right. Um. So then a mobster named uh, Dagger, Roland Dagger, gave him an addictive clay makeup that allowed Hagen to mold his face into any shape he wanted, so he could revert it back to his old self. Um. The only catch is that Hagen has to impersonate others for Dagger's um 
underground jobs. Hmm. Uh, one being um, because Wayne Industries or Wayne Enterprises was going to like was trying to put Dagger out of business, so um, they were going to sabotage him with like a file. So they had Lucius Fox, aka uh, it, well, in Batman the Anime Series, he looked like a combination of uh, of Ollie Williams and uh, <laughs> um, and Morgan Freeman. I don't know. And um, uh, Ollie Williams with anyone. Yeah, with someone else. Yeah. Okay. Right. And uh, he he was impersonating Bruce Wayne, and then Lucius, you know, was like, "Ah, Bruce Wayne tried to have me assassinated," and. <laughs> you know, he's in the hospital, and then everyone's like, Bruce Wayne, you're under a we- a- a west, under under arrest, and et cetera. And Batman's like, I'm going to find out who's doing this, hmm. because he's Bruce Wayne. Um, this one, this dude, I remember very vaguely from, like, I, like, I, I watched the animated series, like, back when I was, I don't know, I want to say 10, 12, I don't know. I, yeah. I remember this one's episode, this is... This yeah. and this and the uh, never mind. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Um. But as a result of um, di- uh, ah, p- uh, of Hagen failing to get the uh, stuff from Lucius, uh, Dagger decides to do do out with him. So he has his mobsters pour an entire um, like an entire vat of the clay uh, makeup on his face, clay putty, thus mutating him, combining with his genotype, and he became the monster known as Clayface. So basically he's a beauty products monster. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> cool he's, cool he's creation your, story, bro. <laughs> he's your basic uh, big shape-shifting super strength guy. You know, he can turn his hands into scissors or a hammer or whatever. Uh, he can turn himself into whoever he wants. He can, you know, I think in one episode of the the new anime series, he's like, you know what the best thing about being a shapeshifter is? I can rip off a place, transform to someone else, hide in the crowns, and rip off another place. Uh, did he sound exactly like that? That accent? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gonna look into that. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> In um, there's there's only in Lego Batman, uh, Clayface was there, but he was portrayed as a mongrel idiot, which I understand it was for comic relief, but at the same time, I don't think there's a single Batman villain besides well Solomon Grundy, who's not actually a real Batman villain. He's more of just like a generic DC villain, who is an actual idiot. So, um, yeah. I mean, um, I'm just gonna give. I, I like I like his backstory. I mean, as stupid as like a uh, beauty products monster might sound, it's actually kind of cool. Right. I mean, oh, I mean, and like, I mean, I guess I could. It's not that original to be a shape shifting monster, but I still, it's it's cool. He's got that beauty products part. He's gonna. Well, he's not gonna look pretty, but he's gonna look cool. Right. Also, he's a professional actor. Which makes it even easier for him to blend in with other people when he's shape shifting. So he's he's very hard to pick up in a crowd. Um, like in Arkham Arkham Asylum, he's in the cell. You know, he's either disguised as Aaron Cash, uh, Warden Sharp, or Commissioner Gordon for some reason. And, and really, if unless you played the game, you, the only way you'll tell it's Clayface is by analyzing him. And if you switch into the detective mode, you can see he actually has no bones in his body. Well, that's kind of weird. Yeah, so that's that's a way Batman can root him out. All right. Um. So scale of one to ten. Uh, eight point five. All right. We're going to decimals here. Eight point five. Double variables. Um. <laughs> All right. All let's right. move on. Villain number three is Mr. Freeze, and I can tell you're going to have so much fun <laughs> no, with this. No, I will, I will try to restrain myself from making Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes. I'm pretty sure that's what they're expecting. So, oh, that would, that's exa- yeah. So that okay. Hey, uh, lol. Yes. What killed the dinosaurs? Oh god damn it, man. <laughs> the ice. I don't, I don't want to say it. I don't, I don't want to say it. <laughs> Stay cool, bird boy. 
nice to meet you or to see you. Well, I don't know. What the fuck? I'm just, I'm just They're not both stupid. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna stay away from them for now. Okay. So his real name is Victor Freeze. He was once a scientist, like a good number of Batman villains. Um, and his wife can contracted a terrible illness. So, as a result of there being no cure, um, he decided to preserve his wife in a cryogenics tank. That's not creepy. No, it's not. Uh, my my first experience with cryogenics was actually Austin Powers, so... Oh, okay. So I'm still a little shaky on my knowledge of cryogenics, but... Um, <laughs> um, but he was using illegal funding from his company, so... Uh, by the way, I'm talking about the animated series. His uh his boss shut down the program. Uh, this resulted in a scuffle because um, Freeze took a gun off a cop and pointed at his boss, saying, "Don't you dare! She's she she's still alive. You're gonna kill her." Uh, and then his boss kicks him into a table of chemicals that again alter his DNA. So um, they were cryogenic stuff. So now he cannot survive outside of a sub-zero temperature. So he wears a suit, a sub-zero suit that actually protects him. But not only does it protect him, it gives him super strength. So basically he can kick ice. He can kick Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that was that was that was well timed. That was well timed. I, I I hate myself. <laughs> um yeah, uh, he also wields a freeze gun. I have no idea how he invented that. Nobody really says it. He just kind of has it. He's a scientist. It. He invents stuff. Why don't we have freeze guns? I don't know. Maybe we do. Stupid government. Um, yeah, so his his uh, crimes mostly re- re- revolve around um, trying to save his wife um, from dying. So he'll be robbing places like Wayne Industries and other places to get um, stuff that he can use to save her life. There was actually a episode right towards the end of the original Batman, the animated series, where um, he kidnapped he or he took Nora after he uh, he lived he li- he was living in like the South Pole or something, mm. and then he he had he like raised a pet polar bear. I'm not even kidding. He had a pet polar bear. Oh my god, that is. That okay, it was cool. the North Pole then. North Pole, North Pole. Polar bears live in the North Pole. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, he he has like a pet polar bear. And the only he, thing the only thing cooler would be if he had like a pet orca whale or something. <laughs> Aquaman. Oh god. <laughs> oh, we're not going there. Um. So, so yeah, he had like a the whales. <laughs> he he had a. a <laughs> He had okay. a pet polar bear, and he kidnaps <laughs> Nora, and Batman like changes, chases him to the Arctic, and then like some something happens in an underwater cave. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna mute my mic for a second. Okay. Um, underwater cave, and Nora's cryogenic thing actually breaks, and then she's perfectly fine. She she goes on living her life, and um. She uh yeah she but she she doesn't know that Victor is alive because he hides himself from her kind of it's like you know I did all this stuff to try to save you but now I can't have you because I'm a monster with a blue face and um, so she she goes out she's on the news she uh, she remarries because she thinks wow. you know, she's on the news for what yeah she no no she was she was on the news like oh was, oh oh okay. Um, she remarried because she thought Victor was dead, and then Victor's condition uh, worsened. Pitch. Victor's condition worse, worsened to a result where his henchman actually had to cut off his head and put it on a robot. Whoa. Yeah. So if you watch the new Batman the animated series, he is a head with a helmet attached to little legs, little robotic legs. What the crap? Yes. Um. As in terms of media, he will be in um, Arkham City. Ooh, looking yes. forward to that. He will be a main villain in Arkham City. There's actually a trailer if you go on YouTube and watch it. Um, and he was also portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Joel Schumacher version of Batman and Robin. And he please go watch it. It's the best movie ever made. Oh, it is. It is. It is worth the the pain. 
The laughter outweighs the pain, really. It's it's like a comic book version of the room. <laughs> oh, God. Except not really. It's kind of more of a. You can just imagine Arnold walking into the room to his wife and going, "Oh hi, babe. I have uh, something for uh, you." Trying trying to think of like an ice based pun on the spot, kind of hard. <laughs> oh hi, ice to see you. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, Overall, I I won't I give Mr. Freeze a ten out of ten, All right, just because cool. he he is very three dimensional. He he's seen crying even though he has no emotions. He says he has no emotions. Um, one of my favorite uh, quotes by him was where Batman was like, "How can you do this? You're gonna kill all these people," and he's like, "Well, Batman, I can't I can't ever see my." Um, wife again. He's like, I can never walk down a warm, uh, warm summer's day with a warm breeze in my face and a warm hand to hold. And then he says, yes, I would kill for that. And you know, that just is one of those poetic lines that just uh, really Slash hits you. Wrist. What an emo man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting another call. But um, oh, well, ignore it. We're doing this shit. I did. Uh, sorry about that. Villain four is Bane. Um, he was never really given a first name. His last name is Dorrance or mm. Dorance. I don't know. Something weird. Oh. Um, he's he was raised in a prison in uh, Central America. Oh, so he's. I assume he's Hispanic. He is somewhat Hispanic. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna just pull him up on the wiki. Oh my God, he's a luchador. What, yes. What, uh, really? Is he really? Nacho Libre. Oh, God. On steroids. Nacho. Uh, break your spine. Oh, yes. We'll get to that. Uh, so when he was raised in uh, the prison, his prison in Central America, uh, he heard tales of Batman in Gotham somehow. I don't know how people... <laughs> um, Secret and... Luchador Network information. Net information yeah. Network. And uh, he, he was haunted by these dreams. And um, he always saw a, a giant bat, so he assumed it was Batman. So he was like, I'm going to go find Batman, I'm going to kill him, but I'm a little kid, so I can't do that. Hmm. Um, while he was in the prison, he was taken for an involuntary experiment um, with the use of a chemical called Venom. Oh. Is that, like, in any relation to his mask kind of looking like Venom from Spider-Man? I think this came out before Spider-Man's Venom. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. But uh, probably not. So anyway, the Venom chemical actually increases your physical stature. Um, he he's. I believe he's like five eleven. If if I think you're on the wiki, but I believe he's about five eleven when I, he's not inflicted that. with the Venom. But he's about uh, six foot eight or something like that Jesus. when he has the Venom. Wow. Um, and so he has he has like a two a vat of it on his back that he carries around, and um, the the really the only way you can beat him is by cutting off his supply or just knocking him unconscious somehow. But uh, the venom didn't turn him into a mindless beast because he uh, he's has incredible mental focus, so he can control his actions while under the venom state. So when he um, became Bane, you know, he uh, broke out of that prison, came all the way to Gotham, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna fucking kill Batman." So what he does <laughs> is he, fucking he goes and he breaks um, all the cells. He breaks down the walls of Arkham Asylum, what sets the- all the villains free, and waits. He just waits. He doesn't do anything. Batman spends three months rounding up everybody, all the villains that escaped. <laughs> and he's had many near-death experiences, and he's just tired. He He's tired. So then uh, Bane, in the comics, figures out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Actually, a number of people do. <laughs> and he's waiting for him in the Batcave. And they start fighting, and Bane picks him up and smashes his back against his knee and breaks his spine. Wait, so the, the Bane, does he fall like kind of in the middle of your two... Categories of Batman villains? He kind of does. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, he broke Batman's back. 
he's the man that broke the bat. And so then he proceeded to take <laughs> control of the Gotham's underworld. And, you know, like all Batman villains, the first time Batman has an encounter with him, he is unable to beat him. Lord, this guy is such a badass. Yeah, so then Batman hires some um, other guy to be Batman for him. I, I forget his name. He's like <laughs> Batman tra- for hire? He's, he's just some trained assassin. It should be in the wiki. Uh, go look it up if you guys um, want to learn more. And basically, Bane was like, oh, Batman, I thought I broke your back, and it's not really Batman, it's some other guy dressed like Batman. And then he almost loses to Bane, but then he cuts the supply of uh, Venom, the tube, and he shrinks him down, and then he like starts proceeding to beat the shit out of Bane, almost kills him. And Robin's like, that's not what Batman's supposed to do! Uh, I'm trying on you! Alright, uh... Alright. Yeah. And every interpretation of him, minus Batman and Robin, he has been actually not only incredibly smart and calm, but also incredibly strong. So you you, you never really see him on, like, any roid rage kind of thing. Hmm. Like, um... Batman the Animated Series, he's kind of like, Gordon is like, oh, we had a deal. And he's like, you know what? Thought about it, didn't like it, so I'm not listening. Kind of. Mm. All right. Uh, yeah, he sucked at Batman and Robin. He, I don't think he had any speaking lines, but he, <laughs> he he was in Arkham Asylum, though, where he was the first boss, and he was yep. really awesome. And um, he will be in The Dark Knight Rises as the main villain. Oh, boy. I am actually, I am looking forward to that. Uh, just a quick off-the-side comment. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this picture on the wiki from the new Batman Adventures, and I swear to God, he's got like an S and M mask on. It has like spikes and everything. Yeah. That <laughs> that's kind of creepy. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, I give him a ten out of ten. How about you? I guess I agree, even though I really don't know much about this film, besides what you just said. Okay, then. Well, 10 out of 10. Rack it up for Bane. Boom. Villain number five, one of the more popular Batman villains, would be the Penguin. Mwah, 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 mwah. I'm tempted to make some King DDD jokes, but I won't. Okay. Um, his real name is Oswald Chesterfield. Oh, God damn it, man. You made me type in King DDD into the wiki search box. <laughs> uh, did, did anything pop up? No. Damn it. All right. Uh, Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot is his name. Um, stealing money and fucking bitches is his game. Fucking bitches. <laughs> um, um, oh, my ability- God. No. <laughs> you made me think of that, that one robot chicken episode. Where they just, like, march of the penguin, and then he... Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh, um, bitches, man. His, his abilities are, are money and machine gun umbrellas. Yes. Actually, Colorful. he has, like, 11 different types of umbrellas, like, that shoot gas, that shoot bombs, grenades. He's a special ops uh, umbrella kind of sewer. Yeah, tactical knives, um, care packages, all those things. All right. Um, he has a fascination with birds and uh, uses him in his schemes. Like um, in one episode of Batman, the animated series, called Almost Got Him, they, uh, in his story where he talked about how he almost got Batman, his plot, he was in an um, aviarium, I think that's what those things are called. I don't know. Hmm. Um, but um, he he poisoned the tips of hummingbirds' noses sprayed Batman with honey, like a honey scent, so they would started nipping at him. Mm-hmm. And he's That's like, right. oh, a few scratches won't kill you, but, you know, when they start, you know, when then they start biting, that's when it really, you know, gets you. Shit. Then he had, like, a big ostrich or something. I forget <laughs> what it was called. Ostrich. And that, that started, like, kicking Batman in the face. Oh, God. So does he ever actually employ penguins, or is that, like, his role alone? Like, is he allowed, Is he the only one who's allowed to be a penguin? I don't know. There was, like, the Adam West show where he had a penguin uh, submarine, and there was Lego Batman where he had a bunch of penguin robots that he would could control. 
you can throw penguin bombs in that game, and they can control little penguins that have handguns and stuff so, like that. So basically, you don't know. If I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, unlike many of Batman's villains, he is uh, not sent to Arkham Asylum because he is not crazy. He is a mobster, so instead he is sent to um, Stonegate Prison? Or it's, e- it's either Blackgate or Black- Stone. I think I'm pretty sure it's Blackgate. Blackgate, okay. He's sent to Blackgate. Um... He was in Batman Returns, the second movie, uh, directed by Tim Burton, and that was very dark. I remember, I, I haven't seen that movie in a long time, but I do remember like the opening scene. His parents had him in a cage, and oh, right. they like threw something in there, and he just like ripped it to shreds with his face, and just like <laughs> threw it back out or something. I don't remember what it was. Not even his like mouth. Like he he, he ripped it apart with his eyes <laughs> and his nose. Um, there was an episode of Batman the Animated Series where he reformed, um, called, yeah, called, like, Birds of a Feather, Mm -hmm. and actually he became a likable character. He, uh, fell in love with a news reporter. She kind of fell for him a little bit. He protected her from, like, a mob, and, you know, he actually looked like he was reforming. He tried to become an upper-class, uh, high-society man. Um, but, um, you know, civilized, like he always wants to be, he always wanted to be civilized, but he's a fat bastard, so he can't (laughs) be. But, um, eventually the truth comes out. She was only interviewing him, you know, to like like, get a scoop on him and stuff. So he got mad and gassed her and (laughs) then he went back to black gate. All right. I guess his mic is muted again because people are just walking in and out of his house through the garage door. So, um. He will be in Arkham City. Looking forward to that. You will find him at his local residence, the Iceberg Lounge. He also will be controlling Solomon Grundy uh, for some reason. Solomon Grundy is in chains and underneath his giant statue. I don't know. Um, And he has a very British voice for some reason. He sounds like a yeah, he sounds... No, no, um, Penguin, yeah, he sounds really British in the trailers, like, Oi, Batman, what you doing here, kind of. <laughs> uh, I apologize to any British people who sound like that. That was, I am a, that was rather racist. I'm a terrible person. That was... but, that, but that's what he sounds like, okay? All right. Let's go. Um, I like Penguin. He's a good, cha- yeah, a good change of pace in a villain. Um, he's just out there for the money. It's not, you know, it doesn't get him off to go out and kill people like the Joker, you know, just he just wants so, the money he's not insane, he's got a no, he's, like, he's, he's not got insane, a specific reason besides kill the fucking Batman yeah Batman right. just ruins his schemes, that's kind of it alright, so, so 1 to 10? 9 out of 10 alright next villain is my third favorite villain I gotta scratch that, my second favorite villain it is the Scarecrow Yay! Scarecrow, also known as Jonathan Crane. Um, obviously a play on Ichabod Crane. As a fact, that's part of his backstory. Um, kid, he always liked the character Ichabod Crane, but he, um, was always, it was like kind of like a son on disappoint moment because Ichabod Crane gave it to his fear. And Jonathan would just read it and be like, I'm never gonna do that. I'm never gonna give in to my fears. Um, and because he was a little stocky little shit, um, people used to mock him and call him Scarecrow because he's skinny and probably had a really fucked up looking face as a kid. Um, yeah. Isn't that like kind of synonymous with all Batman villains? Yes. They were teased they were, as were, kids, so they become mastermind villains. Yes. Speaking of mastermind, he is a master of chemistry, psychology, and biology, and he worked at Gotham University as the professor who specialized in fears and phobias. As a result, he developed a fear toxin, slash gas, slash injection, I don't know, he uses it in a lot of things, that um, he, uh, that when he sprays it, or, you know, whatever, when you ingest it, you, um, start to hallucinate your worst fears and god forbid if i ever get hit by that i'm gonna see that fucking giant spiders all over the place so basically it's like 
Well, not basically, but it's like Joker gas, except kind of the opposite. It's Joker gas, except you don't laugh, you shit your pants. And the fear, it's such, it's so much fear that it'll eventually kill you or drive you crazy kind of thing. All right. So it's like a, okay, so shit your pants gas. Yeah. Let's go with that. Just imagine you're a scarecrow, you spray a guy, you know, he's hallucinating that, I don't know, there's this giant clown with a knife in front of him. All you, <laughs> everything's normal, you're just looking at him standing in the corner, he's just screaming. He's just screaming and like cr- crying in the corner and going like, no, stay away from me! And you're just, it's just a calm room, and just him in the corner screaming, because he thinks there's a he's giant... clown is telling bad jokes and then he dies. Yeah. Um, he has a scarecrow mask. It's kind of like a gas mask, but it's also a scarecrow face, so, yeah. <sighs> uh, the only problem I have with him is that <laughs> the fear gas, well, I, this was also a point in the comics, he, the fear gas is kind of his only thing. Huh. Apparently, huh. he was trained by Ra's al Ghul in the, um form of violent dancing, which is a type of martial arts. It's like a combination of drunken boxing and ballet or something like that. So he can pose a somewhat of a physical threat. Um, I'd assume not much, though. No, yeah. So there was a comic where there, all the people at Arkham are like, ha, ah, you're, you're nothing without your fear gas. So then he's like, alright, I'll prove you wrong. So he basically talks to uh, two inmates into committing suicide. He just uses his words and... Whoa, that's pretty harsh. Yeah. So then everyone was like, oh shit. He's, this guy's scary. Like, he is the epitome of fear. Cool. Um, there's a few episodes of Batman the Animated Series where he appeared. Uh, he was more prevalent in the new Batman Animated Series because he got a completely new makeover. Um, like, they gave him a... They made him dress... They dressed him up like a... Uh, American kind of 1700s reverend preacher clothing um, and they put like a noose around his neck and his face looked like a corpse what? kinda <laughs> look up the picture you'll you'll be surprised I'll look through it now and um originally he was just like a guy in a scarecrow outfit with like a jack-o'-lantern face but it, in the Batman anime series he um he would sabotage sport games with his fear toxin and bet against uh, the team he infected so he could win money to supply his experiments Hmm. Um, Batman the new animated series he has a lot role a a lot of roles one he caused this whole hallucination for uh, Batgirl aka Oracle aka Barbara Gordon and caused her to hallucinate that she actually got killed by him she got knocked off a building and died her father found out Batman was framed as a murderer Everybody, you know, Gordon finds that, like, chases Batman in the Batcave, they arrest Alfred, they arrest Nightwing, (laughs) Batman and Robin are on the run, you know, uh, they hire Bane to help take him down, and at the end of it, Batman and Gordon die, they, Batman kills Bane by taking one of his uh, venom tubes and tying it to the electrical current of a broken bat signal, electrocuting him to death, but right before he dies, Bane rips the bat signal off and throws it at Batman uh, while Batman's uh, helping Gordon off the edge of a building, and Batman falls to his death. And then it's just a dream. They're like, oh, Scarecrow's gas. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he was in Batman Begins in the Dark Knight. Um, at first, when I first saw those, I didn't realize it was him. I didn't realize that was supposed to be Scarecrow. Yeah, because he didn't really look all that ugly. Yeah, he just was just a guy in a suit with a scarecrow mask, like a legitimate suit. And I didn't make the connection until later. Until he actually puts on the mask? No, I, I even after that, I was just like, what the hell is going on? And then I realized, oh shit, that's Scarecrow. <laughs> oh, whoops. Because he's like sitting in his like, time to play, like, or they're calling him Crane, he's just sitting there going, Scarecrow, Scarecrow, call me Scarecrow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, he was also in Arkham Asylum, and for those of you who play, who have played the game, you know what I'm talking about when I say, sometimes that was a bitch. They, they pulled a Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> they pulled a Metal Gear Solid 4 on us and broke the game on us when we were like, 
oh shit, the game's broken, and then it was like, oh, never mind, it's just Scarecrow. Hmm. Yeah, go look that up on YouTube. The Scarecrow encounters, there's three of them, and the third one is pretty f- weird. <laughs> like, You mind explaining it? Okay, so you're walking down the hallway, then all of a sudden the game freezes, like, and it makes staticky noises. Hmm. Um, then it rewinds the entire game back to the beginning. Except this time, Joker and Batman have switched r- positions. So Joker's driving the Batmobile. Uh, Batman's in chains. He's handcuffed, and um, the entire asylum is under the control of like the Joker and the villains and stuff. Cool. Um, so then the Joker just shoots Batman because they all know it's Bruce Wayne. He just shoots him in the head, and then it gives you the game over thing, like retry or quit. And then. Um, when you retry it, like Batman, there's like a little gravestone that says "R.I.P. Bruce Wayne," and like your fist just comes out of the ground, and you like rise up. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, and then the the Scarecrow section are basically you're in this weird city, and that that's like floating in the sky, like debris of buildings, and you're jumping across, trying to not to get seen because the Scarecrow is really really big, and if he sees you, he squashes you with his hand instant death. And the only way out of these sequences is to use the bat signal, and then you snap out of them. A third time around, though, when you get to the bat signal, the hallucination ends, and Batman is holding Scarecrow by the neck, and he has, like, a clawed hand with a bunch of syringes, and he stabs it into your arm. Mm. And then you relive another hallucination where you just have, like, this big kind of, like, final fight. Mm. Then he, uh... Chases you, then you chase him to the sewers, and he's like, Stop, or I'll drop my fear gas into the water supply again for like the 6,000th time. <laughs> and then Killer Croc jumps out and like nearly eats him. And yeah, that's the last time you see him in the game, unless you get the ending cutscene with. There's the one of three ending cutscenes where either Bane, Killer Croc, or Scarecrow come out of the water and put their hands on this um, case of Titan formula. Alright. Well, uh, I think we've been spending... Okay, so, basically, uh, it says here in your, um, your notes that you gave me that you love him. I do love him. Not not like that, but he's... Uh, he's like I said, he's my third favorite villain. Alright, so I... Or second, I just, second favorite villain. He's my second favorite villain. Yeah, alright. So, okay. scale of 1 to 10, I can, just, I can pretty much guess what you're going to give him. Uh, yeah, 11. Okay, that's actually one more than I thought. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Next villain, seven. Killer Croc. Yay. Real name, Waylon Jones. Um, born with a rare mutation called epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. Hyperke- hyperkeratosis, so epidermolytic hyperkeratosis. I looked that up. <laughs> um, he was outcasted by society. Oh, was he bullied by, like, school children again? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Um, the disease God caused... City needs a goddamn therapist. <laughs> That's what Arkham's for. Yeah, uh, but... shit <laughs> yeah, we'll get to why that failed later. Um, the disease caused him to form leathery skin, sharp teeth, and reptilian abilities. Ergo, he could survive underwater for long periods of time. Um, actually, he wasn't just abused by friends. He was raised by his alcoholic aunt, who uh, would beat him regularly. Oh. And he uh, grew to hate humanity, so attack on super strength with, um, yeah, with um, a hate for humanity, and this guy's weird. Uh, he's crazy. Um, he joined the circus as a professional crocodile wrestler, that, therefore that's where he took the name Killer Croc. So not only is he a professional wrestler, but he's got super strength, um, and his, his, actually his, mental, his mental state is... Uh, depleting. So he's becoming more and more animal like as time goes on and on. So he's, would you say, category, whatever category, the stupid, category stupid but strong is? Yeah. Alright. Um, um, was, oh, okay. Um, also, he's cannibalistic, so he likes to eat people. Um, in Arkham Asylum and in the comics, um, it says he is. He ate the hands of the, the left hand of one Aaron Cash, who was a prison guard in Arkham, who was like revered as a hero among the people because he, you know, he puts up with all those 
assholes in Arkham. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. he, he, in the comics, he was a skilled mobster. He was originally from Miami. Go figure. Um, <laughs> he actually killed off Tony Falco and the Squid, which were two big mobsters. He, uh, he had a large mob control in the city. Um, a bunch of them left, though, when he went to Mi- back to Miami. A bunch of them left and uh, joined Solomon Grundy for some reason. And he, he didn't get mad because he knew they, they were going to get what's coming. So one day, Grundy got really pissed off and just killed all of his henchmen. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and Croc was just like, eh. Uh, in the comics, the first um, run-in with Croc, of course, he lost. But Croc was like judo chop all over Batman, so you know, then then the second time they fought, Batman was a little bit more ready. I think he like hit him in the face with like a pile of bricks, I don't remember. Yeah. Sounds painful. Yeah. Uh, he was in Arkham Asylum, he was a big member, there was this whole really shitty boss fight with him, where it wasn't even a boss fight, it was just you walking around the sewers and periodically he would jump out and try to eat you, and all you had to do was hit him in the shock collar, with mm-hmm. a batarang, and he would fall back in the water. So do you think... Are you expecting him to come back in Arkham City? Like, Bane? You know, at the end of Arkham Asylum, there was one of the three cutscenes, and they were so ambiguous, and as of right now, there's been really no hint to those three villains reappearing. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure right now. All right. But we're going to find out in 17 days, mm-hmm. so... If he does reappear, I hope they give him a better kind of... Yeah. Plus, I, yeah. Um, oh, my analysis, I say he's a great villain, but um, like I said, he's somewhat generalized in terms of categories. He's really big, not the brightest. He's not He's not as super genius like the Category 2, but he is He is super strong. So, so, he's, so he's basically your generic bruiser with the added fact that he eats people. Yes. Yeah. Also, he looks like a brother. That, that, that's a major factor. Oh, he lives in sewers. <laughs> and he um, he talks about in Arkham Asylum. He talks about eating people and shitting them out. Okay. okay. Yeah. He, they were like, we found an entire uh, warehouse full of slaughtered people, and he's like, hey, they owed me money. And they're like, they never found all the pieces. And he said, did they check the sewers? And she's like, is that where you hit him? He's like, yeah, kind of. Usually takes about eight hours. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, scale of one to ten. Um, nine. All right. All right. Oh, you're going with, we we'll, still we'll have we have about three more villains, so we'll we'll try to hurry this up. All right. Actually, um, villain number eight is Harley Quinn. Her original name is Harleen Francis Quinzel. And in terms of abilities, she's kind of an acrobat. That's about it. Um, she's coined herself as Joker's boyfriend. She's kind of like the evil, sadistic version of Amy Rose in that sense. <laughs> I was, I was just thinking of that. I was like, I was like Sonic Adventure, man. Also, she wields a giant hammer. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, that. Amy Rose is here. Okay. <laughs> uh. She has a Brooklyn accent. Yes. Um, which, which ranges from, uh, either, like, debilitatingly annoying to awesome. Yeah. Um, she was actually w- once was a doctor at Arkham Asylum, and she was the Joker psychiatrist. Um, the Joker corrupted her, of course, telling her fake lies about his past, trying to make her feel bad for him. And eventually, she came to hate Batman because he she believed that he created Joker. So um, she went out, bought a bunch of um, Harlequin clothes, and. Huh. Uh, Harlequin clothes and came back, broke Joker out, etc., etc. Uh, they kind of spent time together. Joker likes to beat her up because he is a sadistic retard. Hmm. Um, well, not retard, but well, yeah. Um, num- she has teamed up with Poison Ivy numerous times in the show. Uh, they become kind of the uh, the feminist duo. Poison Ivy's telling her to like stick up for herself. She doesn't need Joker. And, um, you know, Harley learns to stand up for herself and stuff like that. All right. Um, in Arkham Asylum, oh, she's going to be in Arkham City, and she was in Arkham Asylum. She had a 
sexy nurse outfit. I'm not calling her sexy. I'm saying that was that's actually what the outfit is called, a sexy nurse outfit. And um, she not she captures Warren Sharp. She frees the Joker. Uh, she kidnaps Commissioner Gordon, and she controls the security gates. So once you finally have your quote unquote boss fight with her, you <laughs> steal the party list from her bra. It was in her bra. You just kind of like pluck it out. Because Batman is like yeah, such and a boss. you take I think you take her fingerprints or the security card or something like that, so you can open gates now. Um. That's really all I have. I don't have much to say about her. I mean, I like her, but at the same time, she didn't really appear in many comics. And um, her story's basically been the same in all the uh, TV shows. Nothing more was really added. So did you say in all of these she's more of a sidekick? Villain? That was her original role. She was never meant to be anything more than the Joker's sidekick. But then every, she, you know, she got such a positive fan base... That they were just like, oh, what the hell? We'll I keep her. Why. I wonder why. What's it? I wonder why. Never mind. <laughs> um, so my analysis: good villain. She never was meant to be a villain, but she fills her role so perfectly that they they, they just form something beautiful in more ways than one. And right. yeah, so I give her a nine point five out of ten. Cool. Uh, oh, no. Number nine. Oh, sorry. What? Number nine is my third favorite villain, uh, Two Face. Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent. Uh, he was once the district attorney of Gotham City. Um, depending on where you read, Two Face's origin is different. Obviously, there is um, the Dark Knight or the explosion caused by the Joker, mm-hmm. Batman the Animated Series. Um, Another explosion as a result of um, he being adopted by mobsters. Mm-hmm. Um, in the original comics, mobster he was doing trial, and the mobster pulled out a vat of acid, pulled out a vial of acid and poured it on his face, and that scarred half of his face. All you need to know is that half of his face is fucked up, huh. and it split him. And in Batman the Animated Series, he was already suffering from split personality disorder. He had been since his childhood, so it made the transition a lot more smoother. And but uh, so he he he's he's all based around fate and luck. So he flips a coin: heads you live, tails you die. Um, he actually uses a trick coin. It's a double heads, but um, the side with um, this, the tail side is actually, you know, it's got either a scratch or a burn mark or something on it to signify that it's the side you are going to die. Nice. He will be in Arkham City. He was mentioned in Arkham Asylum at the very end um, with a police scan reporter. Nice. I'm excited. He, he kidnaps Catwoman, I believe, and he's planning on killing her to gain more respect from the other members of Arkham or from Arkham City. Um, my my particular thing about him is there the very last episode of Batman the animated series. I mean Batman the new animated series was his personality actually splits again. So now he has a third personality, which Two Face doesn't know he has a third personality, where he dresses up at this guy called the Judge, and he oh. goes around and starts like I don't, I I don't remember if he killed or he just like. He like I remember he went to the Penguin's house and was like, Chest, Chestfield, Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot, I found you guilty of of crime or whatever, guilty of illegitimate business, and then like pulls out a sword and cuts his umbrella in half, and then like pushes a giant penguin statue on top of Penguin. Whoa. Yeah, and he like goes after Scarecrow. He like goes after Croc, hits them with like a law book and. Or a hammer, or a gavel, or a sword, and you know Batman fights him in the end. And you find out it's Two Face. So it's like, and it, it reminds me of that Robot Chicken sketch with Two Face. Like, how many <laughs> times is his personality going to split? <laughs> I have these four straws in my hand, Batman. <laughs> four Face. Um, yeah. Right. Great villain. Great villain, great villain. Love him to bits. But not like that. But not like that. <laughs> um, 10 out of 10. All right, cool. 
Any thoughts? Uh, this is actually from my knowledge of Batman uh, and watching some episodes of uh, the animated series. He's one of my more favorite villains. Uh, right. my, my favorite one's up next. And obviously the Joker does not factor in this list because right. he's, he's in a whole different kind of tier. Yeah. My ne- my the next villain is my favorite villain by far. Yes. So let's without further ado, let's cut on. Villain number ten is the Riddler. My God, I love the Riddler. Oh my God, he is great. Real name Edward Nigma. Uh, get it? An Enigma. Ha 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 Um, raised by his father, who refused to recognize his genius. Um, he was constantly beaten for lying and cheating. Um. So, basically, Edward developed an OCD where he would tell the truth, but in the form of riddles. That is why he leaves riddles when he commits crimes. Mm -hmm. Um, So, he, yeah, like, he acquired a fascination with riddles and puzzles. Um, And Batman the Animated Series, his origin was he was already fascinated with riddles. He was working for this company. And they developed this game called The Riddle of the Minotaur. And Edward, like, tried to sue for... um, his company for ownership rights because he developed the game and everything, and he developed all the puzzles, and he was fired. And was, that episode, that, like, was that that one episode where like Batman and Robin are in that maze? Yep, that's oh, it. My, that's like that's literally my favorite episode ever. Yeah, it's called um, um, "If You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich?" Oh, yes, that's what it was. Oh my god, like I watch that like at least once every day at <laughs> yeah. some point in my life. It, it is it is amazing episode. The Riddler wasn't really featured that much in uh, BTAS, and especially in the new Batman animated series, which I wasn't very happy about. But you know what little bits of him were they were they were memorable. Um. So he leaves. Yeah, like I said, he always leaves clues for the police, and Batman always figures them out. Um. He appears to have a severe case of narcissism because he's always trying to prove how much smarter he is than everyone else. If you go on YouTube and look up um, Arkham City um, like audio files, you'll there's one um, where Hugo Strange is on the phone with uh, Mayor Sharp, and I think Hugo Strange has some hypnotic powers. I don't know, mm. um, but then Edward Nigma breaks through the phone call and he's like. Oh, hello, this is Edward Nigma, and then they have a conversation. It's kind of cool. It, it's good precursor. Cool. Um, he was in Arkham Asylum, and um, he didn't really make an appearance. Uh, he had his own kind of side story where if he wanted to s- complete all his challenges, he had about 200 challenges, and he, like, hacked into your um, earpiece so he would talk to you and, like, say, like, oh... You're the great detective. Why can't you figure out my challenges? And my personal favorite one he says was, Ooh, good job. You know, you really are the world's greatest detective. At this point, I'll I'll let you help me find my socks. (laughs) Um, He's also going to be in Arkham City. This time he will actually make an appearance. You actually see his face. Eh, It's okay. He looks more like an old, like a 40-year-old man who just, like, is a comic book nerd and lives in his basement. That's what he kind of looks like to me, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, you'll actually probably you'll probably have a f- fight with him. Um, he was in Batman Forever. Uh, I forgot to mention Two Face was in Batman Forever. Two Face was also in Batman Forever. They were the paired villain. Uh, I don't remember who Two Face was played by, but uh, the Riddler was played by Jim Carrey. <laughs> Very over the top because not only was it supposed to be directed at kids, but he was also homaging George. Um, oh God, what's his name? Um, not George. Uh, Frank Gorshin, the original Riddler in the uh, Adam West TV show, who popularized oh. popularized the role. Um, yeah, uh, where he was more like. Riddles were just a fascination, and he did it just because it got him off, kind of. It made him happy to <laughs> commit crimes and use riddles. Uh, Batman the Animated Series Riddler was much more calm and uh, more uh, more kind of an arrogant asshole in the sense where he would just, like, send riddles and be like, ah, let's see if you can solve this kind of thing. I remember specifically there was one riddle that was like, it all makes sense when you add it up, and it was... Four pe- it was one penny and four quarters. So um, the dialogue between Alfred and Batman was kind of like, uh, add it all, it, you add it all up, it makes sense. And Alfred was like, oh yes, sense is another word for money. <laughs> and then he's like, 
looking at it, and he goes, yeah, yeah, um, Penny. Pennies are made of copper. Copper is another word for police officer. So they write police down, and then they're looking at the quarters, and all the quarters are heads up, so it's going head, 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 headquarters, police headquarters. Uh, okay, so they know oh. police headquarters, and then they're thinking, all right, to add them all up, you get a dollar and one cent, so 101 police headquarters, police headquarters room 101, and that's where Riddler was holding, like, a, uh, uh, Commissioner Gordon hostage. Nifty. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to linger too long on this because we still have one more villain, and we all know who it is, and I am running out of time. So uh, Yes, we are. Uh, so without further ado... My favorite villain is... Sorry. 15 out of 10. Oh, riddle. oh sorry. Yes. Um, I love using his riddles. I like using them on other people, too, just to be an asshole. I'll just like go up to LOL and be like, riddle me this. And I'll and, be like, fuck you. Yeah, he will. <laughs> uh, that's actually my Skype thing, riddle me this. But um, I digress. All right, so last, now... Last, last person. Now, joke. without further ado... His name, much like the villain from Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, is question mark, question mark, question mark. But you don't get to name him later. No, you don't. Yeah. Um, apparently, he was a mobster. Um, Batman stopped their job and knocked him into a vat of chemical, uh, chemicals that dyed his hair green, his skin white, and his lips red, and his face was frozen... Blah, blah, blah. His face was frozen into a perpetual smile. Uh, this kind of fractured his mind. He is crazy. Um, he kills people and thinks it's just a joke. He, he, all he wants to do is make people laugh, as he says numerous times. Um, but he's really just one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, he basically laughs at everything. He has pet hyenas. Um... <laughs> He was, he's a big mobster. He's feared throughout the city. Um, he has sporadic mood swings. He, he kills his own men just for fun. Um, he has his patented Joker gas, which causes uncontrollable laughter and poisons the victim, killing them. Now, what makes me love the Joker so much? Heath Ledger and Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill is my favorite Joker from Batman the Animated Series. It's just, it's his, his, what he does is just so amazing. I can't, I couldn't believe it was Mark Hamill when I first found it out. It's just, it's great. You guys need to watch some BTAS. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, he's also a genius. He pulls up intricate schemes, like Arkham Asylum, an intricate scheme. He uh, was under the alias of Jack White, convinced, uh, Dr. Young to create this whole Titan formula, which is like the Venom formula on steroids. So it's steroids on steroids. Um, and then he, uh, you know, uses it on himself. It was like this whole perfect thing. He choreographed taking over the asylum. And according to the new trailer that was released um, for Arkham City, I believe if you look up Arkham City, we could actually die here. Um, it's a Joker trailer. And he's like, once you realize what I've been planning all along you're just going to die. So it's like, well, was Arkham Asylum all part of this plan that's going to be part of Arkham City, or were they two separate things, or what's going on? Hmm. Uh, in Arkham Asylum, he injects himself with the Titan formula and um, becomes this really big, disgusting version of himself, and he almost beats Batman, but Batman, you know, comes out on top, because if he didn't, it would be really depressing. Hmm. Um some noteworthy things Joker has done. He killed Jason Todd, a.k.a. Robin number two. And in Batman... I want to say uh, Batman Beyond, he basically killed uh, Tim Drake, Joker number... or Robin number three, by altering his DNA, making him into Joker Jr. But then Joker Jr. killed Joker, but then as he grew up, he became Joker number two... Because his DNA altered his mind. So mm -hmm. it's really, really weird. So the Joker died. Bruce Wayne's like 85 and in a wheelchair. And then the Joker comes back with all his memories of his former self. But he, instead he's in like the body of Tim Drake, which is weird. Like <laughs> He's in the body of Tim Drake as the Joker. Like his DNA has been altered like the Joker's. It's weird. Um, yeah. Heath Ledger did a great job as him in The Dark Knight, um, really pushing the limits of psychotic, um, you know, psychotic murder. 
as opposed to just like because like if you think about it, Adam West show I forget um, Caesar something did his voice or played him, and I mean he was he was he wasn't like a murderer he was just like a jokester, and I mean when you just put when you have a mustache and you just put white makeup over your mustache and then go out and play the Joker it just doesn't look convincing. Hmm. Um, seriously, you can see his mustache. <laughs> Jack Nicholson played him in Batman. That was good. Um, I really liked what he did with that. But, um, you know, like um, in when Mark Hamill did him, they wanted to move away from the jokester um, and more towards the physical threat, the murderer, I'm going to kill you and still get a kick out of it. Yeah, intelligent psychopath. Yeah. Anyway, great villain. Um, he was... He's the model for all other villains. I feel like he created the models for Scarecrow and Mad Hatter in all sense of their psychological profiles. All right, uh, just out of curiosity, what is your, like, I know there's multiple, like, great, uh, like, origin stories for him, but what, what is your favorite origin story? Well, all the origin stories I've seen have been basically the same. He falls into acid. Uh, Batman the Animated Series didn't really give him an origin story. It was more like, um... It was more like uh, they they went through the series, and then I think in the movie version and the movie Mask of the Phantasm, they revealed his backstory, and it was just him talking about how it was just like a sepia kind of thing where he got kicked off a platform and fell into acid. So have you? Uh, you've I assume you've read The Killing Joke, right? I actually have not. Oh well, uh, it's actually this is well, I mean, like this is the first one that I've read, and it's also I guess the most widely supported one. But basically, like, he starts out as a comedian before he gets, like, pushed into the acid. I thought that part was cool. Like, the, he starts out as a comedian. Oh, uh, yeah. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. It's kind of right. sad, though, because, like, his wife dies. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But you can't feel bad for the Joker. You either respect him or you're terrified of him. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's my fourth favorite villain. He's just kind of on in his own kind of tier for me. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't. It's not that I like him less than the other guys. It's just that I like the other guys more. You want to give the other guys a chance. Yeah. Like, um, you don't want jo- the Joker to be the obvious choice. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, but, uh, everybody. Out of, wait, wait, wait. First out of ten. Okay. Uh, ten. I give him a twelve. Okay, I'll give him a thirteen. God damn it, man. Okay, well, I, I suppose that wraps up this, this this rant or appreciation or whatever. Uh, maybe next time I will have something to say, but this time I just wasn't. Um, yeah. I know. So we'll 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 periodically do it. Um, right now, what we have in mind, maybe a Pokemon rant. Yep, I can um, totally get into that. Uh, maybe later we'll analyze some more Batman villains. I mean, there are plenty we didn't hit, like Firefly and the Ventriloquist and Catwoman and Poison Ivy. I mean, maybe we'll do those, maybe. Um, and obviously uh, we're going to have more Let's Plays. More Let's Plays and um, Let's play. and walkthroughs. Well, we don't have any right now. We're going to get some. We're doing that. Don't worry. We're planning them. Yes. Um, expect Vietnamese Crystal. <laughs> I am looking forward to that. Oh, Definitely. my goodness. You have no idea. We are going to catch so many men adders. <laughs> so many. All right. Well, uh, we're kind of running out of time here. Very short. All right. So we will. Well, this is the freeze flame. And LOL Simplicity. Signing out. Yeah. See you later, guys.